Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. While my car drives me to the UPS store to check on mail again for my partner for our company, and uh, while I'm going to the gym to go work out at Anytime Fitness, and actually check and make sure my keys are there. Uh, happy Easter, first of all, to those who celebrate it. And uh, second of all, I wanted to talk quickly about the insane rate of, of full self-driving um, downloads that people are getting. 12.3.3, I believe that was what Dirty Tesla got just like last night so so in in the last like week or two we've gotten 12.2 that was just very limited then there was 12.3 then there was 12.3.2 i think was the next one and then 12.3.2.1 which i got and now 12.3.3 and they're coming at very very fast iterations now and my contention is that we saw elon musk by the way it is driving me right now and i'm not doing a full self-driving you know test right now but the car is driving me and if i have to disengage we'll find out but i've got it set to auto max speed and all of that stuff and i'm 12 12.2 12.3.2.1 12 .1, uh, if you haven't seen my video on the first drive and some challenges that i did you should definitely check that out up here but anyway i wanted to talk about when elon said that they were no longer compute constrained i think he was not joking about this it, it like they spent a long time getting the architecture set up if you read walter isaacson's biography let's see if this thing goes left here very interesting you can't see this but there's a, a car coming but it's clearly got its turn signal on and okay it was a little uh, a little soft let's say it could have gone a little bit sooner because the turn signal was on but it also was probably waiting to make sure that that guy was actually turning but anyway um if you go back and and, and think about this historically we're going back to um uh, like December ish of 2022. So a year and four months ago at this point, somewhere in that area, when the team first began to work on this version, the sort of end to end photons in controls out neural network. By August, they had something that Elon and Ashok were happy to demo to the, the public. That, I think it was August 25th. Again, I did a, a, a video on that. If you haven't seen that, you should check that out as well. Um, but that was that was a long time ago, right? So so everyone was like, yeah, August 25th. It's like, where's our copy of the software? Where's version 12 that's end to end, one stack to rule them all? We were all really happy. Then nothing really happened. And if I'm remembering correctly, we were looking at somewhere around the December time frame when the very, very, very few people, uh, Omar, Homer's catalog was uh, basically the only person I know of. I don't, I'd have to think about this, but I think he was the only one. Now there were a couple of other folks that were not quite as big and that I didn't follow as much, but um, but they they also got full self-driving or, you know, that's when they got full self-driving 12. And I think there was just 12 flat out. So that was a, a long wait, right? So September, October, November, four months, three and a half months, somewhere in that range. And that, that was a long time. And then of course, all of us were like, yeah, now it's gonna come out and we'll get version 12 really, really fast. And that will happen any day now. And that didn't happen and it didn't happen. And then it started to roll out to a bunch more people in the February timeframe. Um, and then I, you know, personally didn't get it until March. And then what I got was 12.3, but then I thought, well, I'll be on 12.3 for a month, six weeks, two months at this point, given the nature of the way that updates have been happening in the past. But that's not the way it worked out. I went from 12.3 to 12.3.2.1 within, um, was somewhere on the order of a week, maybe 10 days. I don't even think it was that much time. And then we're getting people with another version of it coming out like already. So what we're looking at here is, is what, you know, Elon said the consequence of Elon saying, well, two things. Number one is it sounds like they're not really compute constrained anymore. So they're able to get into creating these things to do training runs. They can maybe do 12.3, 12.3.2, 12.4, 12.5. They might be able to be doing multiple different training runs at the same time for different versions of the software or doing iterations very rapidly on the software. That kind of a thing is what we could be looking at here. Uh, interestingly enough, the car just bailed on making a turn into the uh, right-hand lane here. <laughs> Again, this is not a full self-driving test, but I thought I would do it while I was driving. But this is going to leave it in a very interestingly awkward situation where it is going to have to squeeze into the right-hand lane to go onto the highway and I don't know what it's gonna do. It'll be very interesting to find out. I, I definitely want it to do that, so I may disengage to force it to do that if I don't see it getting over aggressively enough. Uh, anyway, but um, 
But what we're looking at here is number one, compute constraint has been lowered. So we're, they, they may very well be looking at multiple different training runs of different versions of the software, different versions of the uh, neural network architecture happening simultaneously. Um, and that is pretty amazing, which could also explain why Ashok was able to say unprecedented progress recently. He posted that, did a video on that if you haven't seen them. <laughs> Just reference all these other videos. But he specifically talked about that. He said they're going to be making unprecedented progress. And the indication is that he had already seen some of these training runs, like early versions of this. Because remember, you know, you have to go through the training, then you have to get to QA, then you have to release to employees, then you have to release to the public. So there's a lot of steps to go. So he had probably seen multiple versions of this ahead of where we were actually uh, seeing this. So let's see if this guy lets us in. I'll be very curious to find out the car is, oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> the guy behind us was nice and he allowed us to get in, but that was that was pretty decently handled. I mean, I wouldn't have done, I would have probably pulled in just a little bit faster if it had been me, but that was very, very well done, really. Something that 11 just wouldn't have done. It would have bailed out and ended up going some other direction and we would have had to reroute. So that would have been a pain. So. Um, so anyway, that that's number one is that is that you know we're probably looking at multiple versions of this happening simultaneously now that we're they're, they're not compute constrained anymore, or, or at the very least they're able to redo iterations relatively rapidly based on what they need. But number two, the the, the number two thing that nobody has really talked about yet, and I'm just having to kind of guess based on what I know about neural network training and stuff, is that their architecture is substantially better than it was before. And what I mean by that is, number one, of course, they got rid of 300,000 lines of heuristic code. Uh, number two is that it's probably much more optimized now. A really big revelation was that full self-driving is running on hardware three uh, neural network and, and the, the way that it's the way that it's coded the expectation is that the base layer the hardware it's running on cameras and um, and the hardware board is hardware three and hardware four is only running in emulation at this point it is not running native so that means that my car right now this car is actually running in emulation and it's still able to do it so efficiently that it's running fantastically so, so that's another piece of this is that the architecture, the neural networks have offloaded a lot of the work that was needed to get to uh, full self-driving previously through heuristic code. And if you haven't seen uh, James Dauma, we talked about this on Farzad's channel yesterday or the day before, I think it was yesterday. But anyway, he talks about this and how Basically, there, that you would have inefficient code that was running on CPUs, and the CPU would have been a bottleneck, and the CPU is like 100 times slower than the, the GPU, the graphics processing unit, and then the GPU, according to, to James, is about 100 times slower than the neural network processing units, and so you're looking at a, you know somewhere around 10,000x speed up when you move from working on things that are working on the CPU to the GPU and then to the, to the NPU, the neural processing unit. So you're looking at a massive upgrade in capability of the software if you're able to move some of that software or all of that software into the neural processing units away from the GPU and especially the CPU. Those are gigantic changes of the architecture and then you can take you can get rid of some of the debug code when you're training things there's always there's dropout layers there's there's like things print statements you know just like real real basic stuff that's in there that that is not super optimized and then you also haven't really thought about optimizing it yet you're just trying to get it to work it doesn't really matter but they could be well into the the optimization game now where they're like yeah this thing is working and now what we can do is we can really start to refine this take out any Anything that's unnecessary, reduce the size of the network if need be, uh, you know, uh, take out parameters that are not necessary, get rid of hyperparameters that aren't necessary, start to really refine this thing and, and, and train it. And in that case, what happens is that not only is the, um, is, is the training compute more just because you have more, but you're able to train everything faster. Even if you had the exact same amount of training compute with better architecture, more optimized stuff, getting rid of a lot of this old code and everything, you're getting to a point where even if you had the same hardware, you could train much, much more quickly because of the fact that that you've got just a better architecture in there. So in, in my mind, what I'm guessing here is that, that Tesla has been 
unconstrained. They've been released from the bounds binds of, of, of compute constraint, and that's a huge one. But also at the same time, and one of the reasons we saw this huge long you know, time period of over a year, like 15-ish months before we started seeing all of these crazy update, updates is because they were also working on really refining the architecture, getting the data flywheel working. This is really interesting. There are traffic cones, but they're painted black. <laughs> it's seeing them. It doesn't know they're traffic cones, but it sees them. Wow. I may have to throw in, I don't know if the camera's recording back there in the dash cam, but if it is, this is really cool. Look at this thing go. Wow. I mean, this is weird, right? <laughs> this is going the opposite direction, but <laughs> anyway, let's see if it gets curb rash. Oh, okay. That was pretty cool, right? And it's hopefully going to handle this car as well. Yep, there we go. Pretty awesome. I've got to say, like, this, these are like, they're tar black traffic cones, and the car just figured it out. It was like, yep, I'm cool. So it still won't put me in a parking place. In fact, wait a second, maybe if I just pull up here, maybe it'll decide, yeah, there's some parking places. So let's let's tell it that we want to go to this one. And let's go ahead and start. I'll, get, I'll let the car auto park itself. Why not? While I'm talking here. So it is weird that you have to come out of full self-driving in order to Oh, this is very odd. I think it's going to back in. <laughs> okay, but it's odd that you have to come out of full self-driving to do the auto park because I'd much prefer that it just auto park itself, but it does, you know, it's working. It's odd. I would have gone head in, but it's going tail in, but that's okay. I think probably it goes tail in because it's got the rear view, the rear camera, and so it's substantially better. It is very close to this car. A little bit tight on that, but no, it's actually okay. Honestly, it's okay, and, and it's right up there. Very cool. So anyway, uh, really, really cool stuff about the fact that Tesla is no longer compute constrained and the fact that I believe that we're talking about an architecture that the architectural changes to the neural networks that have made a really, really significant difference to Tesla's capabilities and their, just, their training is just so much faster. That's the TLDR of this whole thing. <laughs> if you want to take away something, their training is going way faster. And I think that they've also gotten things nailed down so much now in terms of quality assurance and testing and stuff like that, that they're not breaking things when they're doing the training. So they're able to roll out these new versions of the software much more rapidly than uh, they were previously. You know, it was a very slow process. It happened relatively quickly with versions 10.x of the software. But when we got to 11, there were really, really long gaps between updates. And so I think we'd all gotten sort of trained on that. And the fact that we're getting multiple updates, I think multiple within a week at this point, you know, things are happening really, really rapidly. And, and, and it's just incredible. And I believe that we probably should be able to expect that this will continue to happen because of the nature of the upgrades. My children are wishing me happy Easter, by the way. So <laughs> that's all of the uh, the bleeps that are coming up. So anyway, I need to go check the mail and see if we got our tax form. And then I need to go to the gym and work out quick. And then I'm going to spend the afternoon with family in celebration of this holiday. I hope everybody has a lovely one. Let me know what you think about this. Are there other reasons that Tesla might be doing these updates much, much, much more quickly than they have been in the past. And, and you know, what do you think? And they're, they're significant upgrades too, by the way. The difference between 12.3 and 12.3.2.1 is I was disengaging, whereas today I just drove here. <laughs> like the car just drove me here until we got to the parking lot, including this insane, weird, like pylon thing that I've never seen before. So that's something that I've, I've been driving for a long time and I've never seen anything like that before. And yet the car handled it. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So, you know, this, this lack of compute constraint and the ability to update the software and the quality of the software when it's updated is really outstanding. So the Tesla team, this is starting to feel a little bit like humanoid robot walking. It seemed like it was never going to happen. We were never going to get robots walking. And now it's very, very close to a solved problem. They still don't walk perfectly, but they walk really, really well. And right now I feel like we're not quite perfect in the full self-driving, but it's really close now. And if they keep making these step changes. In fact, Elon, I think it was last night or the night before, I need to go do a whole video on this, but he said that it's going to be so much better than human driving very, very rapidly that we will look back someday. And I've been predicting this. I mean, I've been saying this for a long time, but that we'll look back on this someday and say like, why were human beings allowed to drive? They should not have been allowed to drive on the roads. They're incredibly dangerous. And that the software is going to be so substantially better than human drivers that we're just going to 
you know, it'll look like caveman days. <laughs> look back and go like, oh my gosh, people are actually allowed to drive? That's terrifying. You know, what a, what a horrible situation and people died and were injured all the time because people suck at driving. So so I think we're getting to that point. I mean, we're, we're going from, you know, kind of dumb, in inability, really can't do anything to it's, it's like okay, but not great and robotic to like now we're getting to the point of like, wow, it's really good. It's like as good as a human being, but if the trajectory can keep going, it will be better than a human being. So just like with AGI, and, and, and Elon did this, there's another video you can watch if you're interested, but just like with AGI, we're gonna be looking at getting to a, a level of artificial general driving. <laughs> it's now, and by the way, it's FSD supervised now, not FSD beta anymore. So we're gonna to get to that level of artificial general driving that's going to be as good as any individual human being very quickly at this point with these updates happening as fast as they are. And then we're going to get to the part of artificial super driving, ASD. We're gonna to get to a point where it's so much better than any human driver that people are going to wonder why humans are allowed to drive anymore. That's going to be the, the qualitative change. People have talked about chat GPT moments with full self driving, but I don't think it's happened yet because people don't know. The whole point of chat GPT was these advances were happening but people didn't know about them. And then all of a sudden we got to a point where the advances were happening and people did know about them. And that was the chat GPT moment. So I don't know exactly when that's gonna happen. Maybe that'll happen now because of the wide rollout of full self-driving beta 12.3.2.1 to the, the broader Tesla fleet in, in, in the US and I believe now Canada too. I think Canada is getting it as well. So that's fantastic news. So anyway, let me know what you think. Do you think this is gonna be the month? Is April going to be the month of Tesla's, you know, chat GPT moment with full self-driving? It'll be the FSD moment instead. I'll be very curious to know what you think about that. In the meantime, I am just gonna keep assuming we're gonna get more. I mean, it's already driving so fantastic. I don't know. It's like, it's getting to the point where I'm like, wow, what are they gonna do to make it better? And yet when it's, 12.3.2.1 is way better than 12.3 was. So if 12.3.3 is that much of an improvement over this current version, we're looking at stuff that's gonna be incredibly impressive very, very quickly. Anyway, everybody have a lovely day. Happy Easter to those who celebrate, and I will see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe, all that other good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.